Strange days indeed. Okay, uh, so uh, we've got songs, uh, five of it. Think, I think I've got five written down. John Bovis, Georgia. We've got Angelo on uh, YouTube. We've got Scott. Scott's downstairs, is he? Yeah, it must be on the door. Is he here? Uh, anyway, you've got Scott down, so we'll see if he's here when when it comes round. And we finish with Gladys with Kukuru. Yes, a song in Kukuru. So, so John, please. I'll get someone else to do the MC as well one of these days. You haven't got to wear a mask when you sing. Right, it's just a just another old chorus. Um, it's interesting, the theme that I picked for this one and Gladys's Kikuyu one, she told, she'll tell you about it. It's a similar, so. <clears throat> okay. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long. As I walk, let me walk close to thee, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. In this life of toils and snares, if I fall to Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I'm just going to sing a chorus as well. Right. <clears throat> Give ear to my words. You know what? I'm going to wait for the ice cream truck because I feel like <laughs> I feel like that is. <laughs> I feel like that's putting me out of tune. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> There we go. It's going to start up when I start singing again. <laughs> All right. Give it to my words, O oh Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray, my voice shall thou hear. Unto thee and will look up. Angelo and then Gladys. Oh, 
Go. Right, I'm going to sing this twice, just the chorus. <clears throat> there remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. He that is entered into his rest, he also sees from his own work. There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. He that is entered into his rest, he also sees from his own words. There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. You're supposed to be doing a duet, but uh, unfortunately for you folks, I got the short straw. Okay, these are a couple of old ones um, from the, uh, technically we call it the blue book. We had a blue and yellow when I first come along to the uh, um, house meetings. So this is out the blue book. Scripture and song. Okay. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's behind me, he's before me, he's ever my friend. Whatever I do, wherever I go. Jesus is my source and my goal. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You're behind me, you're before me, you're ever my friend. Whatever I do, wherever I go. You are my source and my goal. Thank you, Jesus, for your love to me. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace so free. I lift my voice to praise your name. Praise you again and again. You are everything. You are my Lord. That's it. Okay. Thank you.
born again. I found the correct chords. I'm born again. I'm born again. Baptized, I'm born again. I've been baptized. I speak in tongues. I'm born again. I've been baptized. Oh, yes, I speak in tongues. Can you hear the sound? He picked me off the ground. Oh, yes, I'm born again. Oh, yes, I speak in tongues. The power of the Lord. I worship him in one accord. Oh, yes, I speak in tongues. I have been baptized. I'm born again. I'm born again. Um, you might have heard this hymn, uh, it's called Nearer to God, Nearer My God to Thee. Basically, it's um, uh, all the time I live for you, nearer to thee, my Lord, in my journey, my song shall be nearer to thee. Want to live a holy life day and night, be nearer to me. Help me, Jesus, all the days of my life and to please you. In terms of trouble, shield me nearer to thee, my Lord. When my life is over, take me home where I will live forever with you. Uh, life eternal, nearer to thee. So it goes like this. Hakuhena wegai ne guangwenda. Hakuhe makeria gai wakwa. Ingo ya Kiria Gai Wakwa Nee de Mogedi Rogedoy Dire da Huroka Goroine. Nor we born in a gang, 
kuhe ma keria gai wa kwa ma odo ma deru ma ngu shagia ne mo ma ku mega ma igoro hendiria de toro o di kalagie ha ku he ma keria gai wa kwa Jesu dei da gie go ku magie na ma tu ko mo de go ke na gie na do na ma de na o Kalagie ha ku he ma keria gai wa kwa roge do roa dira roa go ko de o kandwa rai goro. wa ku mo shie ne ngwa ga ke ne ra to ndunga to ra ga ha ku he ma kiria ga i wa kwa Okay, so uh, thanks. Very good. We've got um, got a presentation in a minute from from Nathan. Just one uh, prayer request there. Uh, 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 Martin, he, he says, um, bit of a down of this one. He says, can we pray for my uncle that his wife passes over uh, without pain and with peace uh, as she's just about, she's not got long to go. So uh, just put that to the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Savior. Hallelujah. Lord God, uh, 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 we do pray, Lord, uh, uh, for a swift end, Lord Father, uh, in, in no circumstances, Lord, uh, uh, according to that which was read out, Lord Father, uh, uh, so let it be, Lord, and uh, uh, let there be peace upon uh, uh, the family, Lord Father, and also uh, uh, we pray, Lord, for uh, uh, thoughts and words of understanding also, Lord God, uh, uh, at, a, at a difficult time. And just pray uh, uh, that you bless uh, our efforts uh, uh, today, Lord Father, for uh, uh, you'll go further if you bless them, Lord Father, uh, 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 much further than uh, the ever would if it was just just us, Lord. Uh, uh, but it's more than us, Lord. Uh, uh, you're with us, you're in us, Lord Father, and uh, uh, we need that blessing upon things. So uh, we pray that you're blessed to talk to, Lord Father, uh, uh, that we catch all the things, Lord, uh, that will be uh, uh, useful to us, to say the least. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Nathan. I move this.
this is uh, down one. Oh no. It's all right, Michael, to say next slide, is that all right? Cool. No worries. Afternoon, everyone. All those on YouTube and Zoom and everything as well. Hello. Um, just going to give a, a presentation today, this afternoon, on statues, candles, and crosses. I'm going to briefly look into their origin, where they came about, uh, their meaning and um, their significance um, for a role that they could play in our walk. Spoiler alert, um, obviously, we obviously know that um, they're not necessarily based on scripture, uh, in fact, quite the opposite. So there actually is very little or no um, significance to them in our walk with, with God. But hopefully it will be some, some good information to also know and, and, um, and, and to use. And also just to echo what Pastor Steve said earlier today, he said, um, it's about us um, working out and discerning uh, if a thing is based on scripture or if it's based on a man's idea. So hopefully by, by the end of this, we will know for sure which, which way it goes. Um, so first off, it's impossible to know um, the reasons that these things were brought about um, like properly. More to the point, it's possible to know what their motivations were um, the optimist in me likes to think that they were done with good intentions, but not with godly in intentions. And that's the key here, that they aren't based on scripture. Um, if they were, then this talk wouldn't really even have to um, happen, really. Um, so all these things, statues, candles and crosses, at the end of the day, they are surrogates for God. Next slide, please. So let's start in the very beginning. We'll go to... Uh, you don't have to go there, actually. You can just read it from the screen. Uh, Exodus chapter 20. Um, it's important to, I guess, start this the right way, um, which is going straight to the Bible. Um, I guess another word, this is back in the Ten Commandments. This is, I guess, the first Ten Commandments. You, you would have heard about this in um, Sunday school years and, and years ago. Um, See, so this is the first one, Exodus chapter 20. It says uh, in verse 3, it says, Thou shalt not have any other gods before me, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, uh, which is God and Jesus, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. So we know we have a very clear instruction from God what he wants. And even better is that he, he gives us a reason why. The, re the reason for that is because he is a, a jealous God. Um, so it's a really fundamental kind of, um, the fact that it's the, the very first of the uh, Ten Commandments means it's, it's a very fundamental thing. Next slide, please. Um, so shortly after this, that was Exodus chapter 20, Exodus uh, chapter 32, so probably a few months after. Um, this is a story about the children of Israel, um, about, yeah, a, a few months after that they received the law, um, they quickly descended into very poor decision making. Um, I'll just read this out in Exodus chapter 32 um, and in verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down off the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Make us gods, which shall go before us. Uh, for as this is Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we, what not, what's, we, we, we don't know what's become of him. Uh, and Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and your sons, and of your daughters and bring them unto me and all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he made a molten calf and they said these be thy gods these are our, our gods o, o Israel which have brought these out of Egypt they're very quick to forget next slide verse 5 it says and when Aaron saw it uh, who was the high priest I believe at this time he built an altar before it and Aaron made a proclamation and said tomorrow is a feast to the Lord and they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And all the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, who was at the time on, on the mountain, go get thee down for thy people, uh, which thou boughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed uh, thereunto and said, these be thy gods of Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So yeah, they, they very quickly um, 
just failed really they 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 just very quickly forgot what god did for them they quickly forgot that that god said don't do this and, and they went and um and did it which is not good god was very clearly unhappy with that with the um with the the idol or i guess you call it a statue um let's go on to the next slide please so i guess in a bit more recent modern times we've got uh, statues of mary and jesus and various other patron saints um, have been created and worshipped all around the world for hundreds of years now. We don't actually know when it started, probably around the ninth century. Um, there was a rule or a law within the, um, the mainstream, I guess, Roman Catholic Church up until that point um, that no one could make images of God or Jesus, um, whether it's paintings or statues or anything like that. So they kind of ad adhered to that, um, that way of thinking, which was good, I guess. Uh, anyway, something changed. Um, in about the ninth century and everything they said that we can start to make statues and, and paintings but it has to be signed off by the church um, which meant the church had then power to kind of uh, put their own view on what was happening so it wasn't even though it would never be a pure representation it was even less pure because it had their own in, intentions behind it so that was obviously not good um, obviously, I had previously highlighted in Exodus 20, um, at the very end, it said, I'm, uh, for I, the Lord thy God, I'm a jealous God. Um, now, this speaks more to anything, uh, more than anything, to God's state of mind when it comes to, to us. As we know, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So this most definitely applies today. He's, he's, he's still jealous for us. Um, I guess, as an aside to this, as, as we know, the Old Testament law has been done away with. In Mark chapter 12, um, Jesus goes through the two new commandments. I'll just read it out here in verse 29, taking notes. It says, uh, and Jesus answered him, the first of the commandments uh, is, hear O Israel, for the Lord thy God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind and all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none, there is none other commandment greater than these. So he basically turned everything on its head and said, these are the two main commandments now, which is, which is good. But as we know, God's, God's mindset from previously to that was that he is a jealous God, and that hasn't changed. So even as the old law is now passed away, we have a new law, as we know in Mark, um, which is to basically put God first in in. In everything we do with our heart mind soul and and strength um he doesn't ask us to put up statues or um surrogates but but to be going straight to the source so it takes it takes the focus off god when we have uh statues um and these inanimate objects just like the golden calf and we, we know that god was obviously displeased with that and uh what makes you think it'll be any different now he's the same yesterday today and forever um, an interesting thing, just to tack on to the end of this, we don't have much time to go into it, but an idol in its broader sense can be anything to take our focus away from our God. It's, it's our job to identify and discern what it is and take necessary action. Next slide. Candles. So this is uh, obviously the second part now. So there was a... Um, a Roman pagan culture, they used to use candles um, in their own religious practices. This is pre-Christianity. Pre they would light candles that were used in religious and military proceedings. Um, they believed that it showed the divine presence or the aid or the favor uh, of, of their own gods. With the development of emperor worship, candles are also lit near his image as a sign of respect and of reverence. That's where that comes from. Um, as, as we know, when Constantine came in, um, about 300 AD ish, he tried to unite the pagan empire with the Christian empire to basically become the ruler of them both. Um, so he would, he would combine these things together. So what was clearly a Roman pagan culture, he then made it so that it would also be part of the Christian culture, which is not good. Um, so some churches in other, uh, in other denominations, um, uh, they currently use it for one of three things. Uh, it's either praying for the dead, so they would light a candle for the dead, um, so I guess kind of get them out of um, purgatory or wherever else is, um, is going, basically praying for, for their salvation after the fact. Um, it's been lit as an intention of prayer, or finally it is lit as a offering for intercession to one of the patron saints. 
Um, so yeah, so in, uh, in, I guess, in some other denominations of the, um, of churches, they have a light called the, the sanctuary light, which is always burning to symbolize that God or Jesus is always present with them in the place. Um, obviously, we know that when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus then dwells in, in us. So there's no point to, to, to have that. It actually originated from, um, from the Old Testament, which we know has been done away with. Uh, obviously, as well, in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20, Jesus states, uh, when, when two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. There is no mention of candles or of lights or of a sanctuary flame, as, as we know, the old law practices have been done away with and been replaced with the New Testament, which is a personal relationship with God. <coughs> uh, and then, of course, just to support everything here in John chapter eight, he says, um, and Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If he is the light, then we have no need for the candles. Um, his light is, is sufficient for us, for all of us. Next slide. So one of the functions was uh, praying for the dead. Um, and uh, there's no example in scripture where anyone prays for the dead in regards to their judgment or standing with God. It's actually quite the opposite. In John chapter 8, 24, uh, this is Jesus saying, therefore I say unto you uh, that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. What he's saying is that what's done is, is done. At, at the point where you pass on, um, I guess it's down to God um, what happens next. Um, so you, the best, the, the important thing to take away from this is that do everything while you can, while you can, um, to obviously make it on that day. Um, also, as well as this, having prayer for the dead uh, could give us a false hope, which is also isn't very healthy. The best thing to do is just to focus on on today and praying for people that you can pray for, which is um, you and me, basically. Next slide. Intention of prayer. So this is another reason that uh, candles are lit. Um, it's probably the most common one. Um, it's an outward show. So it's, uh, it's saying that... Um, yeah, we'll get to that. So Matthew chapter six, verse five, it says, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into thy closet. And when thou art shut the door, pray to the father, which is in secret. And thy father, which sees in secret will reward you openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for them much speaking. But you, uh, but be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. So what he's saying here very clearly is that um, it's best not to have an outward show when prayer is concerned. Uh, also in, in the verses prior to this and after this as well, he's speaking about tithing and um, tithing and fasting, which has the same approach, which is basically to be humble, um, not to have an outward show of look how good I am, look how many candles I've lit or whatever it is. He wants us to be having prayer in, in private. There's, there's no need for us to light a candle for other people to then see us. There's just no point. Next slide. The next one, uh, the, the third kind of uh, reason for votive candles is, um, is that they, uh, they light it at a patron saint. So I'm sure you guys all know that St. Christopher is the patron saint of traveling. Um, so I would go there to light a candle to then, um, I guess, grant me safe travels on wherever I'm, I'm, I'm going next. Um, there's a couple issues with this. Um, first of all, as, as I'm sure you know, there's no basis in scripture. Um, what, what we're asking this statue to do is to intercede to us, is to pray to God on behalf of us, which is, um, which is not, not actually scriptural at all. Uh, second of all is that Jesus and God don't actually delegate. Um, the prayer that they want us to have is directed straight to them. Um, there's no need for a patron saint to pass the message along. Uh, we can read clearly in Romans chapter 8, in verse 26. He says, uh, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, the Holy Spirit inside you, makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. 
This means the only intercessor we ever need is the Holy Spirit. That is freely given to us. Next slide. So the, the last part of this presentation really is about the cross, um, what it is, how it came about. And I guess um, uh, we have to look at where it originated from. So I've got an excerpt here from the Encyclopedia Britannica from the early 1900s. Uh, it goes through the background on the cross. Uh, so it says here, from its simplicity of form, the cross has been used as a religious symbol and as an ornament from the dawn of man to civilization. Various objects dating from periods long anterior or before the Christian era have been found, marked with crosses of different designs. In almost every part of the old world, India, Syria, Persia, and Egypt have all yielded numberless examples, while numerous instances dating from the latter Stone Age to Christian, time, Christian at times have been found in nearly every part of Europe. The use of the cross as religious as a religious symbol in pre-Christian times among non-Christian peoples may probably be regarded as most universal, and in many cases it was connected with some form of nature worship. So again, that was from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, so yeah, I guess on the slide there, I've, I've just got a bit about kind of what what it actually means if you strip everything down to what it means. So we have to consider, is it even appropriate to use the very tool that was used to kill Jesus as an emblem of our faith? If Jesus had been killed by a hanging, would we carry a symbol of a noose? Um, or if he had been beheaded, would we use a guillotine? Why should we parade the instrument of, sh of shame and death before the world and to be proud of it? The cross is remembering if people who, if you want to wear the cross or look at the cross or sport the cross or whatever it is, you're remembering the way in which he died rather than why he died. And also more importantly, that he rose again. Um, also various types of crosses uh, exist in current culture. Um, they don't all have religious connotations. Um, the best way to kind of think about it is if God wanted us to have a symbol of Christianity, then why have something which was confusing with, with differing meanings across cultures and, and times? The only universal sign of a true Christian is what's on the inside and that has to be the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. Next slide. So, and, and, and that would show as well. So, um, kind of, you kind of see a bit of a theme going on here about people who, who want to light candles or to visit very um, popular statues is that it's an outward show of holiness to others. Um, some, some wear it for protection as they believe it's part of their, uh, sorry, some wear it for protection and some wear it as they believe it's part of their salvation. They think that if they wear the cross, that's their get into heaven card. But obviously that's, 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 that isn't the case. Um, John chapter three, obviously it says in verse five, Jesus answered, uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. No mention of a cross, no mention of wearing a cross or, or anything other than that to get into heaven. It's very, very clear. The gospel is simple and accessible. Next slide. So I guess just kind of, um, this was actually taken from BBC Bite Size. Um, I guess they do GCSE kind of revision. So this is uh, the most basic form of kind of uh, the Catholicism um, part of this, which is very heavily involved with statues, crosses, and obviously candles. Um, so here it says, tradition in some Christian denominations, mainly Catholicism, use different symbolic objects to pray. A cross or a crucifix can remind them of Jesus' sacrifice and, and resurrection. Uh, some will light a candle to create the right atmosphere to feel the presence of God. And rosary bees are used to call on Mary to offer their prayers to God. It can help them remain focused in prayer. So obviously you've got an answer for all of these. If you go next slide, you can kind of see um, if we go to the, to the Bible to find out what, what we actually have to say about that kind of stuff. So the first part of it, which is people that choose to um, use a cross or crucifix to remind them. Um, we remember his death and resurrection each and every week through communion. There's no need to remember the way in which he died, but more important, the fact that he died for us. In Luke chapter 22, um, it says here, and he took the cup, Jesus, and give thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine till the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it them to them saying, this is my body in which you do of remembrance for me. That's how Jesus asked us to remember him, not a cross. 
If you go down to uh, the candle, it says someone like a candle to create the right atmosphere, to feel the presence of God. Um, as, as you know, the Holy Spirit is the way to feel the presence of God. In John chapter 14, it's got three, three scriptures here. It says in verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And verse 20, at that day, you shall know that I am my Father, and, um, and you in me, and I in you. So Jesus is very, very clear that you don't need to light candles of the atmosphere. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, that is, that is God's presence with us forever. Very, very clear. And finally, the rosary beads. Uh, which again is about intercession. Um, the Spirit makes intercession for us, not Mary. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Um, I read it before, but just the, the end part of it just goes, the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And as, as far as we go for keeping us focused, that's, that more comes down to a spiritual discipline, a, um, a godly discipline to, to kind of do the right thing to to open the Bible and to uh, to to pray. Really, that's that's how that we want to remain focused. Next slide. So we've gone through quite a few things today in regards to uh, statues, um, candles, and crosses. Um, I guess the most important thing to take away is that um, it's all about the mindset of God, the fact that He is a jealous God and He that, and that He still is. Um, the the old laws done away but the new commandments are still valid to this day meaning that if we love the lord thy god with all our mind soul strength and heart then we don't need to do anything other than go directly to him in in, in prayer to read uh, directly into his his into his bible there's no need for a surrogate relationship with god amen cool amen I have to wipe it down. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Nathan. He does that stuff from scratch. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, I think most people have to that if they're doing presentations on on basic things. It's, a, it's a, such a while since we've done them. They used to be at a they used to be a regular part of. I think that's what second meetings originally started off for. Was, was that there was a place to teach uh, uh, such things. So we kind of gone back to, uh, uh, to, the, to the original uh, reason that second meetings came up. And uh, not particularly, uh, they can hear me. So, so um, uh, yeah, so we, we continue with these. It's a bit strange in the hall if you're watching from Zoom with all the masks on, but it's not that strange and we can get used to it. And anyway, we haven't got a choice. So, so we just get on with things uh, and, and, and see how they go. And uh, thanks again for all the songs and, and, and the efforts and everything. So uh, we might just close in prayer. Uh, uh, I, I might do that for, for the sake of uh, the only one without a mask. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Father, uh, 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 Lord, um, uh, we just rejoice that we can go directly to you, Lord. Uh, the statues can't hear us, Lord. Uh, can't answer us, Lord. Uh, can't carry us, Lord. Uh, they have to be carried themselves, Lord, Father. Uh, uh, but you can help us, Lord Father, and uh, uh, we need help, Lord Father, uh, 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 to, to grow, Lord Father, uh, in, 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 into the, the to, to the standard that you set, Lord Father, uh, uh, to the aims and the desires you put in our heart, Lord Father. Uh, 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 we need your blessing, Lord Father, and we just pray, Lord, that that continues, Lord Father. Uh, uh, we especially pray, Lord Father, uh, 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 for the confidence, Lord Father, and the uh, overflowing to speak to those, Lord Father, who are maybe thinking, Lord, eh, but there's no one to teach them, Lord, eh, no one to show them eh, 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 what to do, and we know those things, Lord. Eh. Eh, so bless us, Lord, eh, that we can be a blessing to them, Lord, Father, and eh, eh, we, we just thank you, Lord, eh, eh, for your salvation and for your church. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Time for something or other.